Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Sketch Cast. I'm Cryptic Inc. and today I'm painting in gouache and answering, answering a great question I received last week about starting to take your art seriously and what to do when you feel negative about other people's high expectations. Now this kind of sounds like a lot to cram into one video, but to give you some context, here is the question I received on last week's video from a user called N Bushbinder here on YouTube. Uh, sorry if I mess up your username, but that's, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so the question is, I love art, painting, and drawing, but I'm kind of new and becoming more serious with it. Most of my work is practice and isn't a masterpiece, but occasionally when I do make a good piece, everyone expects all my work to be just as good. I started beating myself up when my work isn't good and it just makes me not want to practice anymore. I wonder why I'm not getting better. Um, if you have any tips for me, please help because I do love art, but everyone around me, including my family, makes me feel negative about my work without realizing it. By the way, I love you and your art and your art styles. <laughs> so first off, thank you. Um, thank you so much for the question and for your compliment. Um, I really appreciate that. So I think this could be the start of a really interesting discussion. I'm really interested in hearing what other people have to say. So if you have anything you want to add, um, a similar experience or tips of your own, feel free to comment below because I am just very interested to hear what other, peop other people and artists have to add as well. So before I start, this week I, I do want to talk about the painting a little bit more. Um, this week I painted in gouache again and was really satisfied with the outcome. I tried painting on different paper this time, which was this watercolor paper I found in my closet while I was picking up um, packing art supplies for our move next month. So of course it's, it, was, it was a lot thinner than the Bristol board, but it felt so much easier to apply the gouache and I've always liked the texture of paintings on watercolor paper. I always really liked birds and was thinking about how um, I don't draw them that much anymore. So I really want to bring them back into my art because I feel like that fondness of birds <laughs> is a part of who I am and my kind of aesthetic, uh, if you will. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to paint this week, I just started making thumbnails in my sketchbook um, just randomly until I started to get an idea based on the thumbnails I was making. And I wanted to, I knew I wanted to paint some kind of bird creature and to incorporate these dreams I keep having of a thorny garden into the painting somehow. So basically I keep having these dreams and daydreams of meeting these kind of royalty-like creatures in a labyrinth made of overgrown thorns and plants. And they're like these royal characters that represent my appreciation for nature and honestly how creepy it can be. Sometimes nature freaks me out. Um, I don't know. I haven't really thought too deeply about the themes in my personal drawings, but I always feel like painting these characters brings me a step closer to understanding what they're all about. Um, so if anything else, it's pretty cool to bring these elements from my own dreams and thoughts into reality. I'm still enjoying gouache very much so far. I'm going to have to get new paints and brushes soon because my brushes are breaking and I'm actually running out of paints. <laughs> but before, but I'm sorry, but I'm looking forward to continuing to use this medium in the future. So yeah, I hope you like how it turns out by the end of the video. So back the, to the question. To paraphrase the question this video is all about, this person who commented is a young artist who loves making art and is just recently becoming more serious about it. Most of their work is practice, but when they do make a finished piece they are proud of, they feel that everyone expects the rest of their work to be just as good. And if this sounds familiar to anybody, it's probably because it, it I'm sure it happens a lot. Um, I can say without a doubt that I have totally been there before. Um, the commenter, you mentioned that you're only 14 right now. And yes, I was around your age when I started to be want to be more serious about art. In fact, I think it was 15 or 16 when I decided that I wanted to be serious about art and that this was something I wanted to take seriously. Um, at that age, all I really did were doodles and sketches on loose pieces of paper or in my sketchbook or whatever I did for art class. Um, most of the stuff I drew was during other classes I felt were too 
boring to hardly stay awake in, like uh, algebra class for me. <laughs> I feel like for a lot of artists, there's a time when some of us decide that we want to take it, quote, seriously, unquote, um, meaning that we want to go from drawing in our sketchbook or just doodling to making something more finished or even just better. And it can be frustrating wanting so badly to just be really good all of a sudden but not feeling like you're anywhere near that point yet or that you're at that point yet and honestly i still feel that way and i don't know if that feeling will ever truly go away in my experience though it has gotten a little bit better over time i used to think you know getting as good as i want to be was impossible but it 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 isn't um i thought this comment hit home for me in a way that reminded me of how I was as an artist less than five or six years ago even. Um, and I thought this would be great to discuss with more than just one person because I know there has to be a lot of people out there that has felt or still feels this way right now. So the first issue in this question that this artist seems to be dealing with is that when they make something good, something they are proud of, they show their family and they show people and then feel like maybe those people are expecting the rest of their art to be just as good as that finished piece. You know, they mentioned kind of beating themselves up about it when their next work isn't as good as the last. Um, I don't want to put words into their mouth. This is just what I'm assuming. So the first um, issue is... I have to think about this question in a way where I have to ask myself what would I tell my younger self when I was in this situation? And I think I would tell 14, 15 year old me to draw or to continue to draw the things that excite me and to take a break from showing other people my art sometimes. I say to draw things that excite you because that's what makes drawing and painting fun and I think it's far easier to continue doing something or to improve on something sometimes when you're actually enjoying yourself and what you're doing. Uh, don't get me wrong, fundamentals, anatomy, and all that, it's important, but don't forget to enjoy the process and to do art for yourself first, especially because you're just starting, um, which leads me to my next tip, which is to take a break from showing your art to other people. If other people's high expectations of you are making you feel inadequate with what you can draw right now, take a break. Or at least don't feel like you have to show every piece of scratch paper or sketch or doodle to your family or friends for any kind of approval. Because do art for yourself and, and let go of the pressure to show your work to people sometimes. It, it releases a lot of, of stress and, and, and pressure to um, impress other people when you don't have to right now and I think sharing artwork is fun I, it's one of the reasons I, I like to draw and continue to draw because I like how my art can make people feel or just be appreciated we all like to be appreciated for what we can do but I don't have to do that or show that all the time and it, it took me a little while to realize that I don't have to show my art to people all the time if I get into a slump where I don't like anything I'm drawing I just don't show it to people I don't have to unless I want a critique or, or help and sometimes it ends up in the trash and sometimes it just stays tucked between the pages of my sketchbook and everyone makes sketches they don't like um, even when you finish a piece that you love and are really proud of there's still going to be days after where you don't feel like your sketches are up to par um, or even your finished pieces sometimes and I've done that too, but it, it's not to say that you'll never make good art after that, um, just if you keep on drawing. So my tip for that would be to do art just for yourself for a little while if it's stressing you out how people are expecting you to make really good things. And, you know, take a little break and draw something you like or that might be easy for you. Um, get your confidence back up there and if you want to share your work with somebody then that's great people might expect your artwork to be at the same level all the time but that's not how it always is every day it can go up or down so don't expect yourself to constantly be putting up really good work every single day 
um, I feel like fluctuation happens and it's definitely okay, especially if it's happening in your sketchbook of all places. Um, but even with finished work, fluctuation happens. Sometimes you make things you don't like and, and sometimes you make things that surprise even you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it happens to, to everybody. And again, I, I do want to validate those feelings. Art can be frustrating, man. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. Um, but do you really want to just give up? Like you've got years ahead of you in which you can grow and become better. And it does take time, but it can be worth it. I think if you have low self-esteem in regards to your artwork, um, maybe you can think of it as a temporary state of mind because you might not always feel like that. You could be practicing or painting, say, tomorrow and suddenly feel like you've made progress or made something you like. And it would be because you kept doing this thing that you say you loved so much. Um, when you love to do art that much, and I'm assuming it's a lot because this person's, in this person's case, I mean, they said they loved art. There was like three extra O's in there. <laughs> so it seems like this person really loves art. Um, but when you enjoy something that much, you don't normally just set it down and never pick it back up again. My tip would be to think of this low point, if you are in a low point with your art um, and how you're doing your art, it, as temporary. Think of it as temporary. It will go up and it will go down. But at some point, you've got to build up this tenacity, this stubbornness to keep making art because you love it so much. You know, just love it <laughs> that feeling will go up and down but the point is that it can always come up again by putting in work and remembering to enjoy yourself and to appreciate what it is that you can do lastly um there was a part in this comment that asked why am i not getting any better i think this question um this question in particular deserves a lot more time and maybe its own video and discussion but for the sake of of keeping it short, not going into a really long video. For the sake of brevity, I wanted to touch on it and maybe give some tips about dealing with that feeling too. I think many of us have experienced a time of this thing called an art plateau. Uh, it's when you get to a point where you feel like you're doing the same stuff over and over again and never really improving or getting anywhere further than you are. And Okay, my tip on this might seem a little contradictory, but bear with me. Tip number one would be we all have to let ourselves rest and rejuvenate. Take a break. It might seem illogical to do nothing when you're trying so hard to break through something, but taking a break affords you the time to release stress and anxiety about your work that could be slowing you down or making you more frustrated, all of which can affect the way you look at and, and make your work. It may be after a time of resting, after a break, you can come back seeing your art differently or at least without as much frustration, frustration weighing you down. Um, breaks are always good. Breaks, breaks are wonderful. <laughs> My second tip would be to remain headstrong, which is why I feel like this is a contradicting statement, but bear with me. Um, it's easy to want to give up when you reach a low point in anything. It's, it's like a natural reaction. Oh, it's hard? Well, I mean, I might as well give up. But most of us would rather have the instant gratification of improving very quickly and never having to stop feeling how good it feels to see ourselves be amazing or really good. But that's, I mean, that's not how it happens all the time. So don't let frustration cause you to quit doing something you like altogether because if you just quit, then what? You'll stop making art, okay. And if not making art is something you don't want to do, then don't quit. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a head doctor or anything. Uh, I'm not a, you know, a psychologist or, or whatever. I'm, I'm only some artist. Um, but only you know your specific situation and what's best for you. And ultimately, we are all in control of whether we want to give up on something or not. And being deliberately intent on continuing an art, even when it's frustrating, is a personal decision. We decide whether we want to give up or not. So when we ask ourselves, 
why we're not getting better as artists, we can take a step back. It's okay to take a step back to breathe and think about what we want to work on or enjoy other aspects of our life and then come back to our art with a new feeling. You know, maybe even a refreshed feeling if, you know, if you're lucky. And by remaining headstrong and choosing not to give up when we can't answer this question quickly or become a better artist quickly, we can accept the fact that something will happen in time as long as we don't give up completely and as long as we're looking at the things that we want to work on and just not quit. I feel like I always say this in every video, but be good to yourself. This is like my motto these days. Be good to yourself as an artist and as a person. You're going to have ups and downs with your art and you're going to reach many plateaus as you go. But it's normal and I don't think it's impossible to get through. And so yeah, I really hope this video was helpful in some ways. If you guys feel like you have anything to add, whether you want to talk about your own experiences as an artist so far, I'd love to have a discussion in the comments. This week's questions from me would be, if you did, when, you, when did you decide you wanted to take art seriously? And how old were you? And what do you do when you want to feel better about your art? So yeah, those are my questions. Thanks so much for watching this week's episode. And thanks again to Butch Binder for being brave enough to ask such a thoughtful question. And I'm sorry if I'm, again, if I'm, I'm messing up your username. But I hope to talk to you all more in the comments section below. You guys bring up some great points and really get me excited to continue making these videos. And I definitely just wanted to take a second to Thank you guys for that. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your compliments. Just thank you for being my sub subscribers and coming back for a video every week. So next week, I'm definitely going to talk more about the painting though, I promise. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.